That's a good corner. It looks like he's got some inside leverage on you. Mm -hmm. You're going to give him a shake. When you stab Janoris up here like this, mm -hmm. do you also see his hips open to respect it right there? I do. The skip that you're talking about? Yeah. All I'm doing is just gathering information. I right. know why he's playing me inside is because he's he's on an island. He's by himself. So yeah. he wants to use the sideline side to his help. Janoris is going to open up his hips right there, and that's all you need right. to get past him, right? Yep. In my mind, if I handle what I need to handle at the line of scrimmage, I'm going to get the separation I need. Now it's all up to me to get to the spot on the field where I need to get to. When Doug Baldwin came out of Stanford as an undrafted player, he wasn't big enough, he wasn't fast enough. But what he has, he has a unique one-step quickness. If I could relate it to a basketball player, it would be Allen Iverson and his crossover move. My coaches won't like hearing this, okay. but uh, I'm a basketball player. I figured you were. I, I figured you were. Basketball, basketball is like? my first love. My, my absolute favorite of all time is Allen Iverson. Okay, well, it's Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson was one of those guys who just, he could, he could manipulate his body into making you think he was going one way and actually going the other way. And it was a thing of beauty to me, it was art. And so I wanted to, to translate that into football. I, I call myself a cross-sport pollinated athlete. I like to use basketball moves in football. Terminology. Right. And, 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 but it's a crossover. It's it a nice crossover That's, that's, right that's all it is, that's really all it is, except obviously I don't have the ball. You've got this catch, it's great, you got your concentration, but even when you go to the ground right here, it's the same thing. It's like you're rolling and you're shoulder rolling and you're protecting the ball right. and not giving anything to chance that that ball can come loose. Right. I'm overly sensitive and overly conscious about protecting the ball, right? You know, some people would call me a possession receiver and I, I, I would agree with that. I'm more about the possession than anything else and I want to make sure I'm securing the catch. That's Patrick Peterson on you. He's got you outside, and he's not in bad shape at all. So this goes back to a lot of the film study, a lot of the just knowing Patrick Peterson. So I've been fortunate enough to be able to go against such a great cornerback for yep. a number of years now. And I knew that whenever I get in this situation, um, he knows that the, the field is cut, mm -hmm. so it's going to be hard for me to go inside. Mm -hmm. So he's going to play his outside leverage, and he's going to try to jam me back inside but I also know that Patrick Peterson is a cerebral player. He's got his own head games. Right. And so in this situation, again, I'm just really trying to get information. And so I have to establish outside dominance here. He knows where I'm going. I know where he's going. Now it's just a battle of wits. And Patrick Peterson is a superb athlete. Mm -hmm. He's faster than me. He's stronger than me. He's not, quick, he's not quicker than me. I won't give him that. Okay. But yeah, he's faster than me, he's stronger than me. You can take me. him off the dribble. Of course. <laughs> and he's bigger than me. The difference here is that I know that his strengths can also be his weakness. And so I'm kind of giving him the leverage in terms of being in front, playing in front, and making him feel like he's got me in control. I know he wants to put his hands on me. So yeah. when he does, I'm right giving there. it to him. Allowing the space to happen. And so when he pushes me, he's actually giving me separation. And by kind of lulling him to sleep in that regard, then I'm able to push off, you know, referees don't want to hear that, but push off in the sense where I can generate some separation and still be able to catch the ball. Doug Baldwin got the one-on-one, -on -one and they took advantage. Patrick Peterson, the pro bowler, on coverage there. Nobody can cover Doug Baldwin. Nobody can cover him if he wants to get open. Russell, pass time, got a man open, throws downfield, it's Baldwin's 10, 5, touchdown, Seahawks! Watch Baldwin, look at how he got through Josh Norman. That was one of the better moves at the line of scrimmage you're going to get against one of the better corners in the league. Norman here is going to try and really jab you off the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. Do you know what's going to happen, what he's going to do to you right here? Do you have an idea what he's going to do right here? I do, and it, but it all plays out in the play, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, I, it, again, I'm taking in information from before we're on the field, you know, the week prior when we're studying the film and getting the scouting report to up to this point where he's starting to come up in my face. Just knowing Josh Norman, he plays on the right side of the offense. When he ever tries to, to put his hands on you, if he does his one-hand jab, he's always going to leave with the left. He's going to jab with the left so that he has safety help. That's just what he does. Hey, come on, man. Now, the difference is, is now he's in the slot with me. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's my your, playground. That's, <laughs> that's, that's where I like to get down. He's starting to inch forward. And I'm feeling 
And really all it is, I'm reading body language, right? I'm reading his body language, his mannerisms. And when I'm watching film, I'll just watch how guys walk on the field, what kind of man they are. And it tells me a lot about them. And in this situation, I know Josh Norman is confident enough in his ability that he's going to try to do this. So it, it looks like I'm looking at the ball. Yeah. Really, I'm looking at him. And so when he starts to lean, I already know what I'm going to do. You have to avoid the punch. Right. On that move, you're Allen Iverson crossover here. His feet are frozen. It's like AI beating Michael Jordan. Right. And I'm not the biggest receiver in yeah. the world. I know my strength. So I'm going to use my strength to get open. I want to see your AI step right here. Man, I want to see just how nasty that crossover is. So give us an idea about does it depend on how close the corner is to you yeah, what you're going to do? So depending on what the route is, right, okay. obviously, I got to figure out which side I'm going to try to attack you at. Okay. And so when I'm, try when I'm doing this, when I'm doing the skip, I'm just gathering information. So let's say I'm trying to go outside. Okay. So I'll come off and I'll, I'll kind of lean to the inside so that way you kind of open your hips that way. And when I cross over, it's just literally like I have the ball in my yeah. hand. I'm crossing back over this way. All it is is body language and mannerisms, right? Yeah. So I'm reading you. And essentially, it's again, it's just that chess match that yeah. you're playing with somebody. He makes it like he's going to run an inside move, and he just breaks to the outside, and Russell hits him right on the money. It was too easy. Yeah, it was awesome. Did you see the technique, though? Yeah. He was outside, so I just <laughs> stuck him inside and then left. Are you always going opposite? Not always. Okay. Yeah, so sometimes there's a, there's a play against the Colts where I went the same side and then went outside. You've got the great Doug Baldwin. Look at that move on Bonte Davis. Round one to Baldwin. And sometimes it's even best that they do open up to that way. So if I'm, let's say I'm trying to go inside. Yeah. And I'll go inside sometimes, and I'll keep them there because yeah. they know that the crossover might be coming. Right. And so I'll give like I'm going to crossover and, and then go back. Then you way. really get the separation. Right. Champ Bailey that time against Doug Bowen. He made a nice stutter step at the line of scrimmage. He went up the sideline with a wheel route, and Russell put great air on the football. You don't know what you're going to do until he reacts. Right. Well, for the most part. Okay. I will come to the line of scrimmage with a toolbox in yeah. mind of what okay. I'm going to use. Sure. Right. So, you know, with Patrick Peterson, it's something that I've already brought to the table that I know in this situation, I'm going to use this, I'm going to use this, or I'm going to use this. And every year I go back, so I put them in this portfolio. Yep. So I have a 2016, 2017, I'll have a 2018, yep. right? And in those portfolios, it'll have a breakdown of each defensive back, what their technique was, what they used. And so now I can go back right. if, let's say, Patrick Peterson switches up the hand that he uses, yeah. I can see that, you know? And so now I'm like, okay. he has Because these guys are evolving too. Absolutely.